Hello, dear pupils. Are you ready for another challenge with file two? Certainly, yes. And so we are. So today, we, in today's episode, we will start file two, technology. What shall we review, Mr. Zian? In today's episode, we will first, I mean, interpret a text. Then, review how to express present and past abilities. We will also review word formation and negative prefixes. Well, Mr. Zian, why have you brought a, a robot with you? Because today's text is about a robot. Well, actually, your robot it is just a toy. It can just, like, move. It cannot do anything else. I know that. I know that it is just a toy. I know that my robot cannot fly like Superman. And it cannot even climb high buildings like Spider-Man or Batman. But you have to tell me. What is special about your robot? What can he do? What are his abilities? Well, sir, you're right. I do have a robot, but my robot is a special, and this is what we will learn about it in the next text, okay? Who is Nestor? Well, this is Nestor, the first domestic robot that can do all the chores for you. Quiet, efficient and easy to program, Nestor can make the beds, do the washing up and even cook for you. He can answer the phone and water the flowers when you are away. Well, at night, Nestor can lock up the house and be your burglar alarm so that you can relax and sleep in peace. And, the next, and, and he can also wake you up the next day. Day. Well, after reading this text, we are going to complete a diagram. Well, Ms. Yanni, what's the diagram about? Well, here the, the diagram we have in the middle. Uh, we have the charts that what can, what can Nestor do in the middle. And then we have from one to eight, the different charts that Nestor can do. Of course, you've got to read the text to find out about them and list them from one till eight. All right. Okay. So do you think that it's easy? Well, I guess it is. So let's see the answers with uh, Mr. Zian. For the chores that Nestor can do are the following. Number one, he can make the beds, mm -hmm. can do the washing up, can cook, can answer the phone, can water the flowers, can get you, I mean, can wake you up, can even lock the house, be your burglar alarm. Okay? I think these are all the chores that Nestor can do. Well, now, let's move to the next acti activity and see how good you are at matching expressions with their meanings, all right? So, in activity number two, you need to uh, match the expressions. We've got three expressions and three um, explanations or definitions. So, you need to match the three words with the sentence, which is the closest uh, meaning to them, all right? So, follow with me the, the, the three sentences. We've got one. Uh, domestic robot, two, all the chores, three, a burglar alarm. The definitions are A, a system to detect burglars. B, can do the homework. C, the jobs in and out or around a house. All right? Okay? So, well, I guess that here the meaning of the three expressions I mean, are very clear. Let's move right away to the answers. So the answers are going to be for number one, domestic robot. It, what do I mean by domestic robot? It means it can do the housework. B, all the chores. Here we mean, what do we mean by chores? The jobs in and around a house and of course for a burglar alarm the answer is going to be the last one a system to detect intruders it is really unbelievable yeah. what Nestor the robot can do I really dream to have a robot like him but do such robots exist 
Okay, remember the word unbelievable and follow with me the uh, advertisement about Nestor the robot. Well, this is a TV advertisement about Nestor and look what the ad t tells about Nestor. So we've got one. You will never have an untidy house with Nestor around. Second one. It will be impossible for burglars to get into your house. And the last one. Be sure you will never dislike Nestor. It is unbelievable what Nestor can do. Wow, lots of things. Yeah. Yeah, so what, what, you use the word unbelievable and in the advertisement we, do, we have this kind of words. We've got untidy, impossible, dislike plus unbelievable. What is special about those three words, Mr. Zian? Please tell us. They all have a prefix. They all begin with a prefix. Mm -hmm. So you want, to you want me to tell you what a prefix is? Exactly. Exactly, Mr. Zian. What is a prefix? Remind us what a prefix is. Well, a prefix is a list of letters that are put at the beginning of words to get I mean, a new words. And in today's episode, we are going to deal with six prefixes only, which are ear, m, in, this, l, and finally, n. When we add a prefix to a word, we get an, a new word or a word with an opposite, generally with an opposite meaning. So in the next activity, this is exactly what we are going to practice, all right? So here in this activity, you need to add the appropriate uh, prefix to the list of words you have here in the table. So um, the prefixes are, as Mr. Zian said, ill, and this, in, er, and im. And the words are first, legal, capable, responsible, employed, possible, and obey. Remember, a prefix is added to a word to get its opposite meaning in this case. This is what we see today. All right. So I think that you got it and you did practice it a lot in the class with your teachers. So let's right away directly move to the answers. So when we add the prefix to the word legal, we get the opposite, which is illegal. We add il. Capable, we have incapable. Responsible, irresponsible, employed, unemployed, which means without a job. Possible, impossible, and obey, we get disobey. All right? So be careful when you add the prefixes to the words. All right? So, Mr. Z Mr. Zian, um, what can we notice about the spelling of the words when we add a prefix? You have to know that most of the time, but not always. I mean, I mean uh, the, when words, for example, start or begin with M or P, the prefix is always M. For example, possible, impossible, moral, immoral. And when words begin with, I mean, L, I mean, the prefix is generally always L. For example, logical, illogical, legible, Illegible. And for words that begin with R, the prefix is, I mean, is always ir, for example, regular, irregular. We can apply the rules he explained about the words that start with M or P and so on, but look at the word, for instance, like. It doesn't, we don't say like, so this is not wrong, this is wrong. We say dislike, okay? So be careful and make sure, like, uh, to remember which kind, uh, I mean, what, uh, which um, prefix you put with the word, because there isn't just one rule. We have lots of exceptions. All right. So now, since we're done with the prefixes, we are going to move to the next part, which is always about abilities. And that's the main topic in file two. All right, Mr. Zian, uh, shall we go back like I'm um, not um, uh, well, we will be talking about not my abilities or yours, but uh, even your your abilities, you who is watching us. So, uh, Mr. Zian, um, what can you tell us? I remember that you told me last time that you cannot cook. Uh, Were you serious when you told me that? 
you, you know that what I said last time was an example, Mr. Zian. It's not true, actually. I'm not good, not really good. But it was an example to express uh, an inability here, like I, I can't cook. It was an example, not tr the truth. All Leave right. me, listen to me. Ah. I didn't believe you. <laughs> I, I know Thank that you. you were joking. All right. We use can or able to, um, able to, to express present ability and could or was, was or were able to, to express past ability. Okay, to give you more information and to use it correctly and properly, have a look with us at the following slide. Can and be able to, to express present and future abilities. Examples, I can play the piano. I am able to play the piano. I will probably be able to speak English by the end of, the, of this course. Could and was or were able to express general past ability. For example, I could swim when I was five. I read it, but I wasn't able to understand it. Well, I think that the slides are very clear and right to the point. You just need to be careful, careful when you use be able to, when you talk about present or past or future abilities, because you must change the, the verb be at the beginning of uh, the expression, okay? So in the present we have, this is exactly what you are going to do. I'm not going to help to give the rule here. This is what you are going to do in the next activity, all right? So here you have to replace can and could with be able to and mind the change of the tense with be, all right? So the first sentence, one, I can understand English very well. Two, when my father was young, he could ride a horse. Three, I can help you tomorrow. Four, we can't have access to the street because it's blocked from 12 p.m. All right, I told you, be careful to the change of the modal verb be and to the form of the verb if it is negative or affirmative. All right, let's move right away to uh, check the answers because it's a very uh, simple activity with the first one. Remove can and put instead of it, I am able to understand English very well. Be is here in the present simple. Two, when my grandfather was young in the past, that means that 30 or 40 years ago, he was able to uh, ride a horse. And three, it's going to be in the future, I will be able to help you tomorrow. All right, I will be able to help you tomorrow. Will plus be in the infinitive, in the future form. And the last one, which is in the negative form, here we have, uh, we won't be able uh, to have access to the street because it's blocked, uh, it, has, it is blocked from 12 uh, p.m. All right, be changed, present, past, future, negative, affirmative form, but rem we all use it in general, I told you, as we said before, for abilities or inabilities, present, past and uh, future. Okay, so now it's your turn, Mr. Zian. Well, Where you... I think now it is our pupils' turn uh -huh. to tell us, okay. I mean, it is your turn now mm -hmm. to tell us about your past and future abilities and inabilities by answering the following question. So pay attention, write about your past, present, and even future abilities and inabilities. And mind the use of can, could, was able, were able, okay? So you have to be careful, okay? So let's see together the following slide. Can be able to present and future abilities. Can, I mean, can't not be able to present and future inabilities. Could, was or were able to past abilities. Couldn't, wasn't or weren't able to to express or to talk about your past ability, I mean, inabilities. Yes, okay? yes. Well, in, his, in this activity, all you need to do is last, like, to look at the pictures and write sentences. So the first one, 
So it is about the past. So I leave it to Mr. Zian. So the first one. Okay. So as you can see, you see a child on a bike. Mm -hmm. So here, what could, let's, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Direct question. And you have to answer me. Okay. So what could you or what couldn't you do when you were eight years old? Okay. So let's have a look at the three pictures. So ride a bike, climb a tree, or even whistle, okay? To whistle, okay? So how are you going now to talk, or how are you going to express your past abilities using the pictures mentioned here? Well, you're just going to write simple sentences where you just use could, couldn't, depending if you were able to or not able to, all right? This is about past abilities. Now, let's move to the next slide with a some of the present abilities, present things that you can do right now, like most of us can do. So here, here is the question. What can you or can't you do now at the present moment, right? So we have a picture of a boy painting, somebody else cooking, or maybe using the computer. And I'm sure that most of you can use all what is computer, tablet, smartphone, and so on. All right? And in the last slide, okay, it is going about to, to be about your future abilities. So remember, I can use can as I can use will be able to or won't be able to if it is an inability. So maybe in close future, in few years, you are going to be, you will be able to drive a car. You will be able, I mean, you can become an inventor or from the picture, the third one, you can even uh, fly a plane. Why not? Everything is possible. Just put your head in your studies and achieve it. All right? So, Mr. Zian, are we done with present, past, and future abilities? I think that will be enough. I think it will be enough for our pupils. I think they got it now. And I'm sure they got it. Yes. Sure. Definitely. So, how are we going to finish today's uh, episode, Mr. Zian? In this episode, we have seen together the following points. One, how to express, I mean, uh, present and past abilities and even inabilities. Mm -hmm. Modal verbs can and could. Use, I mean, the use of negative prefixes. Well, this is what we saw today. And in the next episode, we are going to carry on with file two with a, a little review about abilities and inabilities, present and past and future, of course. And then you, you are going to write a report followed by a letter of complaint. So be with us next time. And of course, as I said always, make sure you follow your teachers in the class and you practice and revise at home. All right, see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.